Thank you. So, ever since the success of the book Fifty Shades of Grey, there has been several rip-offs of her. Fifty Shades of Gravy, Fifty Shades of Feminism, Fifty Shades, Fifty Shades, which turns out to be a book about sunglasses. So people say, never judge a book by its cover. What about by its title? Because two months ago, I bought this book called "What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20. I know, pretty cliche, but as soon as I start, I start turning like the first few pages. I found I loved it. It's a book that encourages entrepreneurial spirit. So what the author wants people to do is to let them to be able to、uh, challenge assumptions, to question rules, you know, to to experiment things and to fail. So the basic idea is, if you want to do something and you think that is right for you, you should go ahead and experiment it without hesitating. So after reading this book, I think maybe I should do something. I don't know when, I don't know what, but I know I'm going to do it. So there came a Friday night. Me and two other girls, we went to Hong Kong Sevens to watch the rugby game, and we learned that the next day there will be an after party. In Langkawi Farm. Wow. And then we, we want to take advantage of the crowd of the game. So we were thinking maybe we should sell some Jello shots in Langkawi Farm. And I said that's a great idea. But deep inside I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do it. We're just we're just three stupid girls. We know nothing about business, and I don't even know if it's illegal or not. So I totally forget about it. I went back home and slept until 11 o'clock in the morning. But at about five, four o'clock, the girls caught me, and they were outside of my door. In their hands, I saw, I saw piles of、uh, little, like small cups, boxes of Jello powders, and a bottle of vodka. They were seriously thinking about making those Jello shots. But anyway, since it's such a low budget business, I think I can play with them. So we start making. The Jello shots. We mix the drink, and I constantly try to taste it, whether it's too strong or too sweet, <laughs> until I get a little bit drunk. But still, I'm thinking, no, I'm not going to do it. It's ridiculous. So at eight o'clock, finally, I got an excuse. I need to go to this wedding for real. I need to go to this wedding thing. So it was at eight o'clock. I was already an hour late because of the Jello shots. So I was in a hurry. I run to the door. I quickly change. I run to the door. I open the door. I run out of the door. And then I saw my cat run out the door. I'm like, no, Zoe, go back. I don't have time to play with you. So I grab my cat and try to throw her back into the apartment. And then my cell phone slipped out of my arm, and I heard boom. Don't worry, my phone is fine. <laughs> and the cat successfully ran back into the home, which is which is okay. Except that before she ran back, she scratched my hand so hard, and it was painful. But it looks alright. And I was in a hurry, so I kept pressing the button of the elevator. I want to go out. And, Wait a minute, something's wrong. I looked down, I looked at my hand, and suddenly I saw my hand blood bleeding like hell. And it was at that moment, ladies and gentlemen, that moment of me seeing my blood come like pumping out of my beautiful little hands <laughs> that I feel so alive. No. <laughs> 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 was so I feel so threatened that I I understand that we only got one lifetime to do what we wanted to do. So we have to explore and discover every aspect of our life because after all, human beings are such beautiful creatures, and we have to reach out our potentials. So I went back to my apartment, and my business partner was looking at me like, oh my god, I'm like, girls. We're going to do it today. We're going to make it. So here's how it went. At nine o'clock, I went to this wedding wedding banquet. I had dinner. I took photos with friends, and then it finished at eleven. And by twelve o'clock, I was in the hospital, getting a shot and drinking some medicine. And then I quickly cleaned my wood and then wrapped it up and then had to run with Bob at around two o'clock at night. And two hours later. Right before five o'clock in the morning, we sold all our drinks. A hundred and fifty of those ugly-looking jello shots. <laughs> all of them. Can you believe that? And that's what I did when I was twenty-three.
Well, I learned a lot that day. I learned that life is not a rehearsal. We don't get a second chance to do what we want to do. For most people, we don't do it because I understand. There are people, there are crowds of people standing on the sidelines watching us, encouraging us to take the prescribed path, to head to the direction that they follow because it's easy and it's comforting to both them and for you. But tell me if you really want to do that, if you want to follow their path. Because, you know, being fabulous comes in every flavor. But it all starts with removing the cap to reach out your potential. And remember, you are only limited by your own energy and your imagination. So if you want to be a pilot, go ahead and learn how to fly a helicopter. If you want to be a speech champion, go ahead and join a Toastmaster competition. Because at the end of the day, even if you are not a hero of someone else's life, at least you are a hero of your own. And that's what I want to do when I'm 20, 30, 40, or more. Thank you. Thank you.